Yeah, so how are you going, everyone? I've just done some potting today. I've been out here in the garden all day enjoying myself. Got myself some of these large ceramic pots or terracotta pots with a sort of white wash on them. I thought I'd get a bit of a, well, we want French provincial, Tuscany look, El Greco, Italiano style. Anyway, what we're going to be talking about is uh, filling up your pots with soil. You can use potting mix if you like, but I've got myself four sets of these large ones. Basically, they come in three sizes, and I've uh, filled them all up today. I've got my olive trees in here. What I'm going to do is turn these into a sort of semi-tapery ball. I don't want them to grow too big, and I'm cutting them right down now. I've taken a lot of growth off them, but I'm going to keep shaping them as they grow bigger. So I keep them about this size here, maximum. So you could say they'll be into a ball, but I don't want it to be too formal. I like a little bit of looseness in them too. And I've used potty mix here, but I've also used some topsoil or garden mix, a blended of composted garden mix. Well, basically the stuff from my garden, because I didn't want to spend, I don't know, 200 bucks in potty mix. <laughs> That's a lot of money for anyone's imagination. Uh, so I thought I'm just going to blend it in myself and I've got a tree around the other side I'm going to show you come along but have a look at these ones here first whoa <laughs> what the hell <laughs> oh, there you goes Cara now you just saw her in action chasing a rabbit <laughs> now I've got this is the other one the large pot and I've put a standard kumquat in it's quite tall as you can see it there I've got to take the tops off this as well because it's already stretching now these citrus and I've got a few down there in the uh in the fire pit area. I, I had them in the back corner sitting there neglected. I didn't really look after them enough. And yet they held themselves, they held their ground pretty well. This is going to be cut back down to shape. Yeah, and I'm the right height for this sort of plant, aren't I? I'm going to need a step ladder. So we're just going to cut this just freely like that. Take all this weepy growth or wispy growth off the top because we don't need that for now. We've got a couple of kumquats there already. I've potted this up the same way as I did the other ones at the front there, folks. I've got potting mix and garden mix together. The, the soil's from our garden bed as well. Now, the idea with potting mix, if you've only got one or two or five pots, get yourself some quality potting mix. The more you pay, and it's not about spending money, but it's about getting the quality, because if you buy cheap stuff, expect cheap results. It's not about paying the top dollar, but don't always go for the bottom end of the scale because the blend inside will not do you justice with your plants. Now, kumquats like this, I can't remember what the price of these are, but I expect them to be over 70 bucks each. Now, if you're going to go and buy a $3.95 bag of potting mix and you're going to put a $70 plant in it with a $100 pot, do the sums. That's not the way it works out. So get some quality stuff. But if you've got 100 pots, get some good quality potting mix and you can blend it through. Now, you can blend it through with your garden mix if you like, a little bit of bark yourself. What I did here, because these pots are porous, and I'm going to demonstrate this one here. Now, this is my other kumquat. Unfortunately, this at this height here, without putting any soil underneath, is already the same height as that there. So this is actually a taller kumquat. I was hoping to get two identical ones in height in the store because they're grafted down here. And that there to the point where the head starts is actually longer than that one over there. So somehow we're going to have to train that one there to grow taller uh, to match this one because I don't want them to be out of shape. But first of all, before we start potting this up, let's cut the tops off this one as well because this is a lot taller. So we're just going to cut it randomly anyway back into the foliage line, folks. That's all I need to do. You can see how this one's discoloured a bit? That's because I've neglected it. You're going to probably say he seems to neglect everything, this guy. Well, no, I don't because I've got over 600 fruit trees and I can't get to them all at once. So they all get their little bit sometime or other. Now, just in time before it does drop dead on me. Now, what I do here is we need drainage. So you can put rocks or pebbles if you like at the base. I'm actually going to put some of the potty mix. Now, this is a premium potty mix. I didn't go for a brand, a specific brand. If I do, I prefer Hal's Potty Mix, but I haven't got any at the moment. So that's going to be my base. I'm using Potty Mix as my base for drainage because it's, it's coarse. It's got a bark in it, so it's basically bark, so it shouldn't compact. Now that's as low as I'm going to put it. Now what I'm going to do here, normally you would blend, if you like, your Potty Mix with your soil. And this is my garden soil. You can see it's a bit of a blend of everything there. Uh, it's broken down. There's no bark in it at the moment. I'm not going to put anything in there. I actually want it to be like this. 
and I'm going to use that to fill in around the root zone of the plant itself because I don't want it to drain too quickly. It's a terracotta pot or a porous pot. I need it to hold its moisture. I'm not using terracotta potting mix. I didn't find any. That's the problem. Sometimes you can find it at your local store. So I took the next best option, which is a premium potting mix. Now I am using garden mix. Now you've probably heard me say, and you find the video in the past saying, don't ever pot up with garden soil. Complete garden soil. That's true. I've done it with a few pots in the back. Here I am telling you not to do it uh, for a few trees as a temporary measure and it's okay but it still has crusted over on the surface. It's been, in other words when the sun shines on this soil like that, have a look at that, right? The sun shines on it, it won't penetrate. It might be easy to stick your finger in but water won't break that surface, that surface tension there because there's not enough porosity in it. Um, which meaning water doesn't penetrate easily. So you can break the surface tension by putting mulch on top. In this case, I'm putting potting mix. Decent roots. No problem at all. You can see they're ready to grow out. This is a Murray Valley tree, and it means they grow quality citrus trees. And I'm sure there's a lot of citrus growers out there who do just as good a job in growing citrus. I've grown up with Murray Valley and I'm pretty happy with their quality. Now, this is also grafted. One thing about citrus trees, or any tree in fact, I think there was a time where they said you can actually cover the graft, because uh, up till now everyone, well up to recently they were saying never cover it, and I mean by the growers that is, and we've all practiced that sort of theory, uh, never cover them, so I always work down just below the graft, but here's my dilemma. Now if I don't place this tree this deep in this pot, it's not going to match up the other side. They're not going to be the same height. I've got to actually, while well, I need to, but if I plant it this high, where it needs to be, it's going to be way too tall by comparison to the other one. And I don't think I'll be able to get the other one to stretch up properly. So I am going to risk it. I'm going to plant it down here, and I'm going to work on the theory and the advice that our growers have been saying that you can cover the roots or the graft itself. So let's have a go at it, cover it up to here, and see what happens, eh? Now this tree, it's got a huge lean on it already. It's sitting flat in the ground there, in the surface, but come around here, have a look at the lean. See it there? Now I've got it level in there. I've got to actually plant it on a slight angle like that, so I can keep it nice and straight and keep it in the center. So, with a bit of the garden soil in there, I can position it like that, and that looks pretty good. I don't mind about the stake. Once it thickens up on the stem, I'm gonna take the stake away. So I'm not worried about that visual. You can't be perfect in everything, huh? So we're going to cover it all up around like that. Now, I'm not pressing it down because the soil's got a lot of weight in it already. It's not a potty mix. It's not loose. It's quite heavy. It holds its own body. So it doesn't need compacting. It's going to need a good water afterwards. Now we top it up with our potty mix. This is our blankets, like our mulch. You can see they put a slow release in this stuff. I'm not fond of that stuff, but it's in potty mix at the moment. That's how it is. There we are. Loose again. I'm not pressing it down because the soil underneath is heavy enough to hold it in place. And now all it needs is a little bit of eco boost and liquid cold. <laughs> Hello, little fella. Come here. <laughs> Come and say hello. Say hello to everybody. Look at this little fella here now. This is a little mini Cara. No, Cara didn't give birth, folks. This is our new addition to the family. It's Vader. His name's Vader. Male version of a cane corso. Beautiful pups. And he's going to be... Now, Cara's out busy hunting rabbits. <laughs> but Jack's looking for his little mate. Here he comes. Yeah, he's here, Jack. <laughs> All right. Let me finish off. Okay, so... He'll be joining us and no doubt he'll be in a lot of the videos coming up with us every morning that we'll be posting. Yeah, you go play it together. Now we're going to put some Eco Boost and Liquid Gold in here. Get away to give our plants a feed. If you haven't tried this stuff, folks, go to our website, vasiliesgarden.com, or even check out the local garden centres. Most of them should have it in stock for you. Eco Boost is a biological booster. And Liquid Gold is basically the Rolls-Royce of seaweed so uh, solutions. 
Uh, combine them together. 40 mils per nine litres. This is a four litre watering can. So I put about 20 mils. I do it by eye. You can't put too much. You won't burn your plants, but you know, if you're not sure, use a measuring cup. And give it a, now this is a really weird wand. I know, it's got a big spread on it. So I'm gonna be careful. Let's see how it's just penetrating through. Look at that, see? Soaking through straight away. See that, that's the purpose of the potty mix. Now, if that was all the way through to the bottom, folks, as potty mix, this tree would need a water every day because it'll be so porous. You can put water storing granules in the crystals and all that, that's fine, but nothing holds water than, you know, good composted soil from your garden. Ours is a little bit fine. I could have put a bit of bark in it, but I'm okay with that because I've got bark on top and below it. So the drainage and the air flows there, and in the middle is where the body is of the soil. And look at that, four litres has just gone straight away. So the middle part's gonna hold the moisture for us, and it won't bog down because it's got pebbles underneath it, and it's got the potty mix at the base as well. Also, folks, with the Liquid Gold and Eco Boost, we've had a few emails coming through asking about the foaming that happens when you actually put the two in your watering can and fill it up with water. It, well, that's what will happen when there's, um, you know, the, the bacteria in it. It's, it's all certified organic, it's all natural, it's safe. But if you don't want it foaming out of your watering can as you're turning the water on, so what you're doing is using the water as a, as a mixing agent, I'll just do what I do. Just get a little stick like that, fill your watering can up first with the water, then pour a little bit of your solution in there to top it up and just stir it around like that. And that saves you worrying about it foaming out of your watering can. If you, if you don't mind the foaming, it's nothing wrong with that, it's quite safe. And at the end of the day, it's good for the garden, good for the environment, and very good for your plants. Check it all out on our website, thesillysgarden.com. From Eva Silly, Madison.